everyone welcome to freedom solutions dao we have another series here that we're doing which is going to be based on uh, adam kokesh and his run for the 2020 presidency um he is a uh kind of a long time anarchist and uh, certainly a volunteerist um he would probably describe his solutions as being based on agorism uh, which is, you know, functionally free trade between people. And uh, this has long time been his probably main method of solving or dissolving uh, the power of government by moving trade back down to the individual, um, removing the controls that government can have over trade via agorism. And uh, he's now, uh, in addition to that, uh, going to add another strategy to uh, dismantling the government. Um, in addition to, of course, his daily, uh, you know, his daily shows where he tries to enlighten people. He does um, interviews and talks to people about government and tries to dissolve some of the fantasies, so to speak, that people have um, about what government is and its functions and, you know, tries to basically convert people into the mindset of nonviolence. And so he's adding to, you know, this repertoire of solutions uh, a bid for the presidency in 2020 on the sole, um, basically on the sole premise that he's going to dismantle uh, the United States government. So it's a pretty interesting platform. I like it. I think um, he'll get an opportunity or hopefully get an opportunity to have a bigger um, bully pulpit. So a bigger, wider uh, audience to be able to spread his message and get the point across. Um, and uh, if he has an actionable plan that people can uh, tangibly feel and feel like there's um, some free market solutions behind it, then I think uh, he could actually be successful. So um, that's what we're here to do. We're here to help him be successful by building him a very detailed strategy. Uh, strategic and uh, roadmap centric plan where he can say hey we have uh, a step a multi-step plan to dismantle the government piece by piece um, here's what we're doing why we're doing it and uh, how we're going to do it so that's what we're here for we're here to help with that plan um, I think uh, we've you know me or really I have been doing um, design work and architectural building architectural systems and complex systems uh, both uh, you know in government way way in my younger years into uh, corporate entities for the last uh, you know, 17 or 20 years uh, 15 years and really been focused on heterogeneous type solutions or a combination of both tech with business operations and solving really complex problems. And so I think uh, this is a great opportunity for me to apply my skills in um, a scenario where we can actually build, Adam, a roadmap uh, to dismantling the government. Now, just a caveat here, I'm not affiliated with Adam Kokesh, um, you know, had kind of minor exchanges online, things like that. Um, I've been following for quite some time. I'm quite sure he has no idea who I am until recently. <laughs> um, so there's no, there's, there's no affiliation here. This is not me, uh, about me being part of Adam Kokus's, um, campaign or anything like that. It's just merely, I like what he's doing. Um, I admire, uh, what he has done in the past. And uh, I'd like to do what I can to help his initiative. And there's lots of people I admire and lots of people that I think are doing a great job in the freedom space. And I, I want to help them as best as, uh, as I can. Uh, and he's one of them. So uh, a little bit of background on what he kind of announced. I, I think if I recall correctly, he, he made uh, this statement in an interview a number of years ago. Actually, I think during kind of the Ron Paul era and um where he was going to run for presidency um of course after i think you have to be 35 if i remember, recall correctly after his you know roughly 35 or somewhere in that ballpark um and then that would you know fall in line with the the presidential election cycle of 2020 and so he's kind of had this idea for for quite some time um and most recently he started organizing around it so i think the last couple of years he started organizing um, different groups and different campaigns throughout the states. So he's got via his um, forums, 
uh, lots of collaboration going on to help build a platform for him uh, to dismantle the government as he runs for president in 2020. And uh, he's, of course, done some videos about this. And this is kind of his his main focus area, as uh, I would assume for the next four years, of course, in addition to uh, championing agorism and um, doing the things that he does on a daily basis, which is interviewing people and, and teaching them about uh, non-aggression principle and applying anarchy and reality and things of that nature. So, so uh, obviously he's, well, he's thought this out, right? So he, he's been thinking for quite some time about where he wants to take this and how he's going to accomplish it and how he can build a robust platform. And uh, building an actual dismantlement plan on the government is, is pretty intense. Um, I watched Ron Paul do it in uh, his first run. You know, he started at the foundations of kind of, you know, how would you transition to a, I guess, back to a constitutionalist republic. Um, it's kind of largely what Ron Paul had in mind. And then he matured that plan in 2020 into something called the Restore America Plan which is um, actually pretty good. It's pretty robust. It has a number of um, components to it, which I think are, are valuable, and also some statistics behind some of the financials, uh, and also Rob Paul's behind, behind what he was going to cut first and why. Um, and we'll go into, you know, our plan, right? And uh, at a high level, and then we'll do so, a series of videos which go into each one of um, the major lines of, uh, f organization for the government and how we'll dismantle them and how we'll um, generally solve them. I mean, are we going to just dissolve them all together? Are we going to sell them off into the free market so that the market can, you know, privatize them and, and, and use them? Um, how are we going to do that, right? We're going to go through each one of these and we'll have a budgetary plan and we'll show uh, government shrinking to zero, both from an organizational perspective as well as a financial perspective. And um, ideally, we can align that with how the market will react to some degree uh, in terms of absorbing these new functions and uh, and obviously the freedoms that will be enabled. So we'll try to make some guesses there in terms of how we can expand GDP by um, decreasing capital controls and regulations and all this other stuff. So how does it, what does this have to do with Freedom Solutions DAO? So really, we at Freedom Solutions DAO are doing just this, right? <laughs> We're doing exactly what Adam wants to do, but from less, not so much the bully pulpit perspective or means by trying to grab um, the presidency, but we're really trying to do this in a very decentralized way, right? So we're actually building systems in the marketplace that will take certain functions and like safety. Um, so the former role of police officers and law enforcement will putting that back into the marketplace that's, you know, competitive and, and everyone has access to. And of course, thus it reduces the cost and everybody can actually have true safety. Um, we're doing that with, uh, def, you know, quote unquote collective defense, which would be something like, you know, the military and, and how insurance companies can take over the role of defense, um, you know, against aggressive nations during, during a transition to anarchy where there's still some countries that are not anarchists and um, they may potentially see us as a target. I doubt because of free trade and unilateral free trade that that would be an issue. But, um, you know, there's, there's, there definitely needs to be a transitionary period where we, we mitigate risk of other violent aggressors other than, um, you know, the U.S. government. So uh, it's actually it's actually perfectly in line with what we're doing. And um, I think a lot of our solutions that we're going to be putting in the marketplace anyway will help. And um, putting a framework around how we transition from government in a more, I guess, transparent way versus a kind of, um, you know, chipping away at different market segments is actually not a bad idea. And I think it'll help Adam a lot and it will help build um, solutions in the marketplace which actually support his ideas. Uh, and in line with this roadmap. So, uh, my goal is to provide this in, for ads to the world, provide this to Adam, and I'm hoping that people will collaborate and give me feedback and we can involve this as we go along doing this series. I'm kind of envisioning this series to be, uh, at least 20 episodes or so. So just, uh, get ready for the long schlog. It's, it's a big organization we've got to dismantle and we've got to do it in a way that, um, you know, it doesn't, doesn't scare people. It's rational. It, uh, it, it doesn't hurt the economy. And I think there's a way to do it. And, and based on my analysis of what I've seen Ron Paul do in the past and my own thoughts through the last 15 or so years I've thought about dismantling the U.S. government, um, 
I, th I think there's actually a pretty easy way to do it um, and not impact the, ec the economy in a major way uh, and enable the economy to absorb some of these uh, functions that are valuable and watch uh, as we dissolve some of these other functions that are not valuable and destructive to uh, free trade and, and uh, capital. So the beginning. All right. How do we end violence? This is, this is this government, right? So government is violence. They have a monopoly on force. We centralize a bunch of resources inside a centralized apparatus called government. And uh, they have the monopoly on violence. They, at the moment, um, have more guns and more uh, people that support the, the centralization of, of violence than there are counter organizations to that right so so there's roughly um you know I, i'd say under a million or so armed agents or somewhere in that ballpark both military law enforcement etc irs <laughs> these days uh of the government which um are, are risks right so they have a big monopoly on violence today there's no other organization that has um that many foot soldiers so to speak right so that's inherently flawed right even if you did believe in the concept of some form of government there should certainly be a competing forms of government um within a particular geo i'm not talking about you know eu versus united states or whatever i'm talking about over a particular over the same geography there should certainly be um, competing alternatives and i'm not talking about political parties because you actually have to be able to flee one party to the other in real time. So I should be able to say, hey, I don't no longer voluntarily associate with this form of governance, and now I want to go to this form of governance tomorrow, right? So um, so anyway, so that's why government is the monopoly on violence, and they have uh, the significant amount of resources and the ability to print money to make up fake resources to exact their violence, which is you know one of the key problems. So, um, so in order to solve the dismantlement of government or dismantling of government peacefully, you have to understand why it exists in the first place, right? Why is it valuable? Um, what are the myths that are uh, perpetrated to make people believe it's valuable? Um, and, and how do we solve those when we do dismantle it, right? So the key pillars are really the fact that government provides a system of incentives and disincentives. So they provide as an incentive, free stuff to a certain segment of people, either through corporatism, where they provide a, um, a sub-segment of the population in big business an opportunity to be anti-competitive with the other players in the marketplace by creating um, controls and regulations which favor one in, in government and one corporation over another and of course the corporation is just using government as as because it provides these incentives it's not that corporations would do this without government right without government they wouldn't have an apparatus to go after that has a monopoly on violence that has a monopoly on resources and say hey build me an anti-competitive advantage right <laughs> it just wouldn't exist because nobody in the marketplace would want that and every oh, they come from the consumers to the current existing businesses would want competition because then uh, or free trade because then they could enter into the marketplace and be successful themselves, right? And own more of the profit motive for themselves, which is why profit's so important, right? It's one of those motivating factors that ensure competition uh, persists. And so that's one form of incentive, right? That's a corporatist kind of uh, cronyism incentive. And then the other one is really wrapped around um, individualistic incentives, which is welfare, right? So government jobs and welfare, um, you know, welfare is welfare, uh, all these other type of programs where you're basically taking from one other group and you're stealing from one other group and you're providing it to another. And so these all provide incentives for people to not rebel against the government or not care about the inefficiencies of government or not care about the fact that it, it, it has to steal from someone else to give to you. And then the disincentives for the people who aren't on the take, so to speak, within the population, the people who are actually productive in society, actually producing wealth, producing value for everyone else, producing innovation, um, these types of people are disincentivized to 
uh, dismantle the government or overthrow the government or ignore the government through violence, right? So this is when, you know, if you don't pay your taxes over, over a period of a few years, you know, after some, a bunch of letters, men with guns will come to your home and incarcerate you, right? This is, um, if you make choices where you, you, you know, you choose to, to partake in some sort of substance and put it in your body, all of a sudden men with guns will come to your home and, and tell you what to choose and what not to choose. Back in the day, it was slavery. Now, you know, direct slavery, like uh, enabling the capture of human beings to be used for uh, labor function. And now we're just abstracting that a little bit. So we're not whipping and chaining people. We're basically creating controls such as incentives and disincentives to keep people to be slaves. Right. So still slavery, just a different means of slavery. And so that's why government's so powerful is because it's got this world of incentives and disincentives. Right. So. If you change those incentives to something that's nonviolent and, you know, it's, it's based in the free market where you can say, Hey, well, you can make more money if you don't operate in the fiat world or the government world, while fiat being the fake currency the government creates. Um, then you can maximize your profit margins and you can be more successful with your business because you don't have the overhead of regulations you know, you have the opportunity of choice. So if people don't like the way that your organizations run, they can go to another organization and that's how you enforce regulations, right? You enforce the concept of, I have to have standards as a business through the economic principle of free trade, where I can go to a competitor that, you know, perhaps doesn't pollute or that um, doesn't violate NAP in some way or, you know, what have you. And then thus I can, I can move the value. I can move my, dollar somewhere else and make you do what I want you to do as a consumer, right? So that's that's the whole point. So we build voluntary incentives in the free market that ensure people do the right things and do what the market wants without inflicting violence, right? And then our disincentives move from the gun, right? Moving to people's homes uh, or violating people uh, and seizing their assets and, and, you know, invading their homes and all this other stuff to ostracism. So again, just like you would treat an organization by moving your dollars from one organization, say like Sony to X, you know, Microsoft. Uh, so you'd move from Sony PlayStation to Xbox because you preferred the services that they provided. So too, would you move your friendship from the neighbor down the road who does support government and the use of force to steal from you? Uh, you would, you know, no longer associate with that person, but you would associate with the other friend who doesn't believe that, right? So we move our incentives from free shit, <laughs> which is currently what the government provides you, uh, either individuals through welfare or through government jobs or through cronyism to corporate welfare or disincentives like violence. And we move the world into an system of free trade of you know, retaining more economic value, making higher profit margins, ideally, or more more capital to reinvest in your business to grow it more uh, by reducing the cost through decentralization of both operations and technology. And by decentralizing as well, our businesses through technology, we can get the government out of their ability to actually control those entities. Because when you decentralize, you can no longer stop a decentralized system, whether you're a government or anybody else. So the whole point is, as we start to build these decentralized systems in the, in the marketplace, we can, you know, free ourselves of the violence of government, the controls of government, maximize profit, incentivize people to join us in these, in this new world, right? Where you're building your business as a decentralized system that it now maximizes your profit, reduces your operational expense, and thus it becomes a positive incentive and not a disincentive like violence, right? And then ostracism is the way we control uh, bad actors or irrational actors, right? That want to do harm to us on an individual level. But the, the real, the real statistical, uh, reality here is that government is 99% of the violence, right? <laughs> there is no peer violence. There's very minimal peer violence, right? I shouldn't say there's no, but there's very minimal peer violence. I mean, just think about the last time you were stolen from, from the government, which is today, every day of your life, right? Versus the last time somebody mugged you. Yeah. Pretty statistically anomalous, right? 
So, so the, the whole point is, is would you rather solve the big problem <laughs> or would you rather care about the minor problem, right? And the minor problem solves itself anyway, because in a free market, you have access to safety solutions that actually work, right? Bodyguards, um, security organizations that um, are actually incentivized to protect you versus incentivized to put a jackboot on your throat, right? So anyway, we'll go into the details of that later. But the whole point is, is is we move the system of incentives and disincentives from the violent methodology that government employs into a nonviolent free market uh, capitalistic world where people are incentivized to do uh, the best thing for the marketplace and the best thing for people um, without violence, right? So getting tactical, um, when we go into the, the key pillars of government and we go into you know, kind of why the government stays afloat, one of the key things is revenue streams, right? So today they print money uh, through the Federal Reserve System, they take the dollar and uh, they continue to print it. So that's called inflationary currency, which makes the value of the currency deflationary. So it decreases in value every time they print a new dollar. And that in and of itself is theft, right? So that instantaneously they're stealing from everyone on the planet who and everyone on the planet, because the U.S. dollar is the reserve currency, right, of the world. So everyone else bases their value on the value of the dollar or indexes it, at least against it, right? And so the whole idea is, is every time you print another dollar in the U.S. dollar, 7 billion people get fucked. Right? I mean, that's just horrible. 7 billion people across the planet are instantaneously stolen from, right? That's, that's the most evil, insidious thing you could ever imagine. And it's built on a system. It's just built on the system that people believe in these pieces of paper that are a, a representation of your work product being exchanged for someone else's work product, right? <laughs> it's just crazy. So, so anyway, so as we move these systems to things like Bitcoin or things like, you know, cryptocurrencies, we can start to move out of that world really rapidly, right? And uh, so one of the plans that we're proposing is we would actually, um, of course, abolish the Federal Reserve. We would uh, abolish all currency regulations and everyone could have their own free currency. Um, and then the government would actually start doing business in cryptocurrencies because it has the most monetary value as well as gold, uh, because as the most, um, you know, it has basically the most reserve value. So the idea is it's it's the least fettered currency out there in terms of both fungibility, in terms of um, the ability to preserve value, the ability to exchange value instantaneously, etc. And so, you know, one of the key pillars to start to get to, to dissolve government is to get government to start using free market principles and free market tools um, as it run, as it runs out the door. <laughs> so you so you further and further and faster. Um, start to remove the the cost and the burden and the violence of government uh, more rapidly. So uh, we dissolve its its revenue streams. We eliminate taxes and we move um, you know the United States government onto a cryptocurrency dollar standard, etc. In and of itself, in the in the way it conducts business in the marketplace. Then on top of that, we of course eliminate all currency controls. So anyone can make their own currency. You choose, you know, whether or not you're going to take B of A's token or Citibank's token or cryptocurrencies or, you know, your own, your own currency, right? Your own money. So it doesn't matter. Uh, like it used to be like when the country was first founded. It worked just fine. There would be um, segmented currencies based on, you know, uh, a particular retailer, a particular bank, a particular city, a particular town, a particular person would have their own currencies. It didn't really matter. Whatever you felt was valuable as a medium of exchange to represent your value being traded for someone else's value, right? We're, we're going to move the system back to that. The next one is safety. One of the big, big pillars here is that people believe that without government, they can't be safe. And that without government, they can't have an arbitrator, right? So we're going to go into building solutions, um, free market solutions, where we can incentivize competition. We can build a completely free market of safety. So law enforcement that we know today becomes bodyguards, security guards, uh, private investigators, dispute resolution organizations, and insurance companies that basically enable us to risk mitigate, um, you know, theft, violence, peer violence, um, other nation other nations violence it also um, ensures that we can measure and analyze the violence in the marketplace these insurance companies and they're motivated to reduce violence both you know reduce child abuse that 
um, sorry about that, reduces child abuse, which is the genesis of violence, to reduce, you know, the ability for people to exact violence, such as, you know, in, in incentives which get people to, um, you know, go into programs where they're treated for anger management, go into programs where you um, investigate all the world's governments and their assets and what they're doing and how they're militarizing and you know are they are they demilitarizing or who is our threat all this stuff and that becomes populated it becomes information like a standardized report that's read on the news media nightly or something right where you can say hey well today here's our threat index and here's what we're doing about it and they would publicize reports and they publish this to the to the world and the world would know and the world would say hey not not acceptable. We're not going to do business with you, right? And whenever there's a violent actor, we would then have the awareness and the knowledge and the information and the incentives to try to get people to not use violence, right? That's that's the transition kind of architecture that we're we're building here to incentivize people to not operate in the violent world because you can make more money in the nonviolent world. Like if we all just collaborated together, we'd all be 10 times better off because we would, the, the inherent ability for an individual to amplify their value in the marketplace is exponential. Like by default, every human being before the invention of the wheel and before the invention of tools and everything else could at least sustain four human beings, yourself, your wife, and at least two children. That's been pretty well, you know, identified throughout uh, the history of human nature that at the bare minimum, we we produce four times the excess of our human value, right? Somewhere in that ballpark. Now, when you add in innovations like the wheel, we can amplify that by a thousand. So there's, you know, et cetera. And now you add the internet and you can amplify that by millions. And so the whole idea is that that's why we live today, at least in the first world countries, um, better than kings used to, you know, even 500 years ago, right? And so, so the whole point is, is that if you just let the market be free and you just let people collaborate instead of use violence to keep your competition out or use, you know, the violence apparatus of government to keep competition out or the violence apparatus to kill your neighbor or to tell other people what to do, everyone would be better off. And opinions, like say you were a Christian versus an atheist, you guys could, you know, people could go collaborate with whom, whomever they wanted, have their own little worlds, and they wouldn't have to, um, you know, and, and not that they couldn't collaborate, but they'd come together and collaborate in the free market, and then they wouldn't have to necessarily say, well, hey, I, I don't want to live next to somebody who's an atheist. Fine, don't, don't. Go live in a neighborhood where it's all Christians, and go mingle and, and voluntarily associate as you do today. Like, you go to church, you collaborate with those people, your friends are generally have the same ethical principles as you do. Um, you, you shouldn't be forced to associate with people you don't want. It's just like how we choose our friends, right? We, we don't choose our friends just randomly. We choose them based on principles. We choose them based on, you know, mutual hobbies, all that other stuff. And, and it's an individualistic choice to choose who we associate with. And, and so instead of forcing people together, people can come together when they want to. They can come together, um, you know, at where it makes sense principally and they, they appreciate each other. And when someone initiates violence, initiates force, theft, murder, rape, whatever, right? Whatever that initiation is, then they can be risk mitigated, right? You can either sell, defend yourself or you could not do trade with them. There'd be public reputation systems like a credit score, which would identify like, hey, yeah, this guy, you know, it doesn't pay his bills on time. He doesn't, you know, commit to his his agreements, his contracts, etc. Well, I'm not going to do business with him. And that's going to modify people's behavior through ostracism. That's that's the natural and default way we solve problems today on an, on an individual level, right? When you get government involved, then it abstracts itself. A, it becomes super inefficient. B, it's unable to identify intent from action, right? So, it, it really dissolves the ability for people to make choices and control and, and incentivize or disincentivize people, right? So, so anyway, the whole point is with safety, as we start to build these solutions for safety, we will dissolve the different components within government that currently exist supposedly for safety, right? Which is actually not safety. It's actually just being used for the initiation of violence. But, um, but again, we need to solve and make sure that people are aware that they're not going to be unsafe in this new world, right? We need to solve that. We, we need to solve that concern in people's minds beyond reasonable doubt. And we will do that. Uh, insurance. So 
The other thing people care about is their health, right? It goes along with survivability. Everything human beings do is because they want to ensure their genes are surviving, right? So they have to survive as a vessel for their genes so that they can breed, so that they can have offspring, and their offspring can move forward into the next generation, right? Or that's, that's the entire purpose of human beings biologically, right? That's our imperative. That's our primal drive. If you violate that primal drive, then people will defend themselves, right? So, so we've got to show, hey, we're going to take the monopoly on insurance that currently exists in, in the government in some forms, right? It's not complete monopoly, right? But the, the, obviously the healthcare exchange is, is, um, creating, uh, winners and losers and it's, you know, it's creating these false standards and all these other things when people like myself who are young and people who just want, like, yeah, dude, if I drop dead, I just want to make sure my family's taken care of. I don't really give a shit about you paying for my copay, right? <laughs> like the young people don't care. They, cause they're not sick yet. When they get, you know, when they get closer to that age and they live like, Hey, all right, now I'm 30 or something like that. Um, uh, then they're like, okay, well, I'm going to invest in insurance because now I know I'm going to need it. I'm going to have a family. I'm going to have a wife that's pregnant. I'm going to have kids, all this other stuff. Now I need to pay more attention. To my, that's, that's a choice, right? I'm not saying everyone makes that choice. What I'm saying is more young people are more inclined to just, you know, say, Hey, if I drop dead, I want my assets to go somewhere. Um, versus the needing a full board of insurance where everything's paid for and all this other stuff. If you want that, great. Go get platinum insurance, right? That's your choice. You, you got to pay higher, higher costs for that, but you know, it's your choice, right? And as the market starts to move, as, and as we take away the, the theft of taxation, you now all have all that money back and you can go invest it how you want. It could be, you could, you could buy a, you know, super platinum insurance where, you, you know, uh, somebody sends a helicopter to your home every time you stub your toe and, and massages your toe and, until it's perfect, right? And, and, uh, it gives you magical, wonderful drugs or whatever. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, you can, you can choose whatever you want. And now you have the money to do it. <laughs> and it goes to what you want and what, you know, and it makes you Ensure that the people you're giving the money to, the companies you're giving the money to, the individuals you're giving the money to to provide a service is accountable instead of being unaccountable through a third party apparatus called government today, right? So again, this is a, what we're all about. We're, we're going to be building him this, ro ro uh, this roadmap, which has detailed plans on how we transition from the monopolies that governments have today on these services that people actually care about, dissolving the services that are destructive you know, to the marketplace that have no value at all, like taxation, and how we're going to do it and how we're going to get into the marketplace. Um, the other ones are transit, right? You know, uh, everyone's concerned about roads, how we're going to get everywhere. The reality is roads are already built by private industry. 90% of the roads are built by a subdivision when, you know, someone takes a piece of property, they subdivide it into housing units, they build a road so that the roads can go through the housing units and connect to some other, you know, kind of interstate road or some main artery, some sort of main road, right, where you can get to another main road. And the idea is in the free market, again, the the communities or the subdivision or the multitude of subdivisions would get together and say, hey, okay, well, we need a road to connect these other roads. How are we going to do that? Maybe people don't build roads. Maybe they're like, hey, we're all going to build helipads and we're all going to have these, um, these, these small personal transport, you know, helicopters and we're going to use drones to move packages around instead of transit on roads and, and trucking companies or whatever, right? Who knows? There, there's a billion solutions in the free market and for transit and moving goods and services and people or moving, you know, goods and people, uh, there's a billion options. Like we probably would all be flying in planes today if we hadn't been for government, you know, forcing and investing all this crap in roads, right? Uh, because because then all these other corporations, they just like, well, the road's already built. I don't have to build another road. I don't have to find another means of transportation. Let's just use this thing, right? And it's probably not the most efficient means of transport. Internet may have been created as a result of not having interstates, perhaps. Who knows, right? So the whole point is, is we're going to move the, you know, transit and the, the last parallel of transit, which is the, um, is kind of the standards behind how roads are connected, um, how they're built, how designed, all this other stuff. That stuff is a lot of the more esoteric engineering stuff, of course, is done in the free market. The actual building of roads anyway in the interstate is still done in the free market. The maintenance of it is still done in the free market, but the money comes from the government, 
right? And then of course they misappropriate it and they give it to their friends, and then and then like a fraction of the amount amount of money that was originally intended for roads actually gets to roads, right? So again, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna if make this world more efficient. We're gonna move the money directly back to the individual so you can control where it goes, so that you guys can invest in your community. And you guys can actually build the things you want and make people accountable for the things that you're asking for. Because today you have no accountability. You have a four-year election cycle if you get a president. And then on top of that, you have another four-year cycle to get a, another Congress in there. Um, you know, and then of course there's judges that are lifers, uh, in the Supreme Court, in the Supreme Court, all this other stuff. So you're lucky if you ever see results in your lifetime <laughs> based on voting. Right. So we're going to move that. We're going to move that back into your control, into the free market where you can make things happen tomorrow, not, you know, 10 generations away. Right. So same thing with trade, right? There should be no regulations on trade. There should be no controls on trade. Trade is a, is the mo, is at its, its most basic principle, the single most important thing we can do to collaborate with other people. So all you social justice warriors out there, you want to help people get a job. Build something valuable to the marketplace, sell it in the marketplace. That's how you help people make their lives better, right? The internet has done far more to make the lives better of human beings, the wheel, the internet, uh, the assembly line, everything else than anything you could ever hope to with from your bleeding heart, right? <laughs> so, so if you really want to help people, get your ass in, in gear and go build a, a decentralized system, right? That's how you help people. All right, we'll, we'll go to that other series, but uh, I just want to get the point across. Trade is the essence of community. It is the essence by which we love each other by trading, right? Because it helps the survival of the other person because we're giving them something that makes them better off and we're getting something that makes us better off, right? All right. So the transition. All right. So we kind of talked about it at a really high level what we need to do what are the key pillars that we need to get rid of in government you know kind of how we're going to do it of course we're going to push into the free market we're going to build decentralized systems the government can't stop in the interim how do we how do we transition right how do we start to transition so like, like a perfect example one of the ones that i is near, very near and dear in my heart is the national parks and the um, state parks and all these other parks that are uh, controlled and monopolized by the government so how how would we handle the park service in a free market, right? Well, what would happen is during the transition phase, we or Adam and the team and the, the government, etc., would basically take um, the parks and they would sell them off at auction to the marketplace. And what would happen is concessionaires or amusement uh, companies would say, hey, lots of people love parks. Tons of people visit parks, both in the United States and across the globe. You know, they come here specifically so they can enjoy the, the national parks. So there's already a market demand, right? So people already want this stuff. So they're going to pay for the market to supply it, right? And so what will happen is we'll sell it off. The highest bidder will take it. Either a group of people or, like I said, the concessionaires. Or maybe some people will just build the trust. Maybe me and, you know, a hundred or a thousand other people will go build the trust and we'll We'll, um, we'll own Glacier National Park and we'll say that no one can, um, no one, you know, can leave trash. We can't, uh, we can't, uh, we can't touch the ecosystem. We've got to leave the ecosystem alone. We do, you know, a lot of the things that environmentalists believe in today as a way of managing that particular ecosystem untouched. And we'll build a trust across the 100,000 people easily. It's very easily done with technology. It takes less than, you know, one kilobyte uh, worth of data entry um, to codify a trust with hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, right? So we can do this easily now that technology is here, um, very easily. And and then that trust ensures the the land is managed, it's, it's, you know, the property is being managed by that trust. And then that trust can then hire free market people to manage that ecosystem so they can manage the uh the the game you know they can manage the the overall you know plant uh, the plants and the the you know the fauna they can go through that they can go through that ecosystem and make sure that people aren't violating it you know they could provide safety mechanisms all this other stuff and it actually be optimized and all that money that you want to go to parks will actually go to parks as opposed to some politician's pocket or some politician's friend's pocket or you know whatever it may be so we sell this stuff off, right? So we sell off assets the government currently has stolen from you and everyone else and call it a public domain. 
which means that basically the government owns it, not you. And if you ever want to test that, go to a public property and, you know, uh, protest. <laughs> and I guarantee you they'll be like, oh, no, move off into, you know, an easement or, you know, a crosswalk, et cetera. So there's lots of examples of, of those scenarios where um, the government tells you what to do on public property, right? That's, that's a, it's, it's a logical, it's rational. Um, so, and, and that proves that it's actually private property. It's just owned by the government, <laughs> right? Because they're telling you what to do. So, again, we move these things back into the private ecosystem and then you get to actually control what happens. And if you're super interested in what happens to the parks, then you'll be a bidder on these systems or on, on these properties. Or you'll be um, a person who's coalescing an organization to, you know, buy the park and build a trust or to buy the park and run an organization that protects the park, etc. So that's how we start to transition. We sell off assets that are... Um, you know, they're basically tr tr should be privatized, should be owned by people, um, which is everything, right? Of course, we so we sell off all those assets. Um, we start to take each functional area we walked through before, like the revenue, the health and safety, all this other stuff. We create free market solutions for that. So we basically, as as the government or as Adam and 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 the the administration and the Senate, we basically say, hey, we're going to sell off these pieces. So um, law enforcement. You know, you can go build your own privatized law enforcement organizations where, um, you know, they're, they're based on voluntary contracts. People have to enter in contracts for you to enforce your rules in your particular area, like say your apartment complex or, um, your own home or, you know, as a bodyguard, et cetera, and go build these things up. And then we'll, we'll start dissolving the police over time, right? As, as, as these solutions come online in the free market. Um, and then, you know, what, what's most important to tackle first? We kind of mentioned definitely the revenue stream. We want to, we want to choke the cancer, right? We want to stop the cancer of government from growing. So we need to stop it for its ability to print money. We need to stop its ability to steal money from people, right? Um, and then we want to get government to actually use free market monies. Like I mentioned, cryptos, et cetera. Um, so, you know, what's our timeline? We, we have roughly four years to, but assuming that he gets one term, right? Assuming we're just going to do this all in one term. We have really four years to transition all these services. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a work back plan from 2024 to 2020, which says these are all the things we need to do in order to transition and dismantle peacefully government. And then I'm also going to work on as a sub, sub plan to that, um, what we need to do to influence people to actually um you know support these initiatives right so so who are the congressmen we need to get behind us who are the people the individuals in the voting population we need to get behind us all this so 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 it's part of building a, an overall transition plan or overall roadmap not only do you have to have the ideas and the execution strategy if all things work perfectly but you also have to figure out how to sell this idea to people right because obviously you the people have to want this to happen and if you don't, then we won't be successful. So we have to make sure that our arguments, our logic, our transition plans make sense and that they're detailed enough and that they allay any concerns you may have, right? And to actually show that we're going to build a solution that works. All right. So how do we build it, right? We, we kind of hinted at some of these things during the process, but we build, we, we do what we're doing here at, at Freedom Solutions DAO. We start to build actual free market solutions, which prove to the world that the free market can do solve these problems. The free market can solve safety. The free market can solve um, dispute resolution. The free market can build standards to get you know people to connect roads or to you know manage um, certain things in the way that the communities want them to, etc. So we start building, right? We we start building. That's how you solve anything. You just start doing it, and um, and then part of the what we do for Adam and what we do for for kind of his presidential campaign is we start to build that architecture, right? So we build um, a guiding principles, we build uh, a roadmap, uh, we build an overarching strategy behind what he's trying to do, and then we build a tactical execution plan, which goes through, okay, what do you need to do, you know, this month, this month, this month, throughout the next four years to get that to be completed, and what do you got to do 
before 2020, right? What, what, what type of buy-in does he need to start getting? How, how does he build a, a marketing campaign to get people to aware of this thing, to get buy-in as individuals, to get their Congress people behind it, all this other stuff. So we got tons of work to do. Um, and he's got tons of work to do <laughs> and, uh, the people who want to help build this. So, um, so that's basically how we execute, right? So I just wanted to give this introduction, right? This is this is episode zero. This is basically the first episode in the series. I, I predict there will probably have at least 20 or more, um, probably more, and it may go on for quite some time, where we walk through kind of what is the strategy? What can we do to help Adam uh, build his campaign to dismantle the government in 2020 uh, peacefully, right, and orderly? And, and how do we do that? What, what is the transition um, architecture? What is the strategy? How, what's the execution plan? Uh, how do we get people to buy in? How do we get people to understand what these solutions are and how, the, how they're better, right? And so that's what we're going to be working on. And uh, I hope you join us. We, we're really going to need your help. We're going to need your um, input. And uh, we definitely need you to collaborate. <laughs> so looking forward to this. Um, I'm going to be spending a fair amount of time on Adam's uh, forums, collaborating with the people on there who are already working on, um, kind of getting buy-in and everything. I haven't seen a lot of plans on there yet, but that's I'm hoping to change that. I'm hoping to get input from you guys as well. Um, on the freedomonline.com, he's got a set of forums where people are collaborating on how, how to help his uh, presidential campaign as well as the, the architecture as well as uh, in general, just kind of collaborating on freedom. So I invite you guys to join that. Uh, obviously, watch, like, subscribe to Adam's channel. He's got a lot of great stuff about non-aggression principle, how it can be applied, uh, how he's enlightening people on a daily basis, and a lot of stuff around agorism, how you can tactically today start to feel uh, freedom in your daily life, right? Um, follow him on Twitter, uh, all this stuff. He tweets, you know, somewhat regularly. And, uh, and then obviously help fund and donate Adam's, uh, to Adam's campaign if you're interested and excited by what's going on here. Uh, last thing I'll just talk about is our show, right? Obviously our show is fueled by you. Uh, you guys support everything we do. Um, you, you guys make this, this, this functional and feasible for me to do. Uh, as, and, you know, as we ramp up our support and the donations ramp up, then I can start to apply more and more of my time to this. And my goal is to spend 100% of my time doing just this, right? Current today, um, I'm trying to, or finish, finishing launching a, a startup so that my friends can, uh, you know, run that thing. <laughs> and then I can move on to this and spend the rest of my life doing this. So I look forward to you guys, uh, donating to fuel the show. Uh, support the show, subscribe, share, like, uh, please give me comments and feedback. I, I'm really collaborative. If, if there's anything about me, I'm, I'm super collaborative. I like people's input. I like to, um, get people to assist in building things because I think that working together with people is, is the best means of, of accomplishing anything. Um, because more minds, the better, right? So anyway, please, uh, donate, please collaborate and let me know what you think about the show and how we can improve it. Thank you so much.